It's from a pendant from the Viking Age, and it's not even just medieval space buns, it's sailor boots. Full blown. In my video about all of the things that Viking hair historically was not, we got a wonderfully large number of comments from people asking about accurate, evidence-supported, non-appropriative medieval European and Viking Age hairstyles, especially ones that would be adaptable to the modern day. So I have with me an expert on this subject who is here to teach us that not all medieval hairstyles are as silly as this. Jackie from Rigger Crafts. Hello. I'm a jeweler by trade and also a reenactor. I tend to do more of the medieval time period and the Viking Age. I like to look a lot into medieval hair care, hygiene, and makeup and how they would have actually looked as opposed to what Hollywood wants us to think they look like. Before I was a historian and a YouTuber, I was a hairdresser for several years. A lot of the fun is seeing how the medieval hair care uh, methods are like supported by what we know today from the, the science of how hair care works. So some of these styles can be incredibly useful in a modern setting if you find washing your hair to be a lot of trouble, if you end up in like the situation I did where I didn't have hot water in my house for a few weeks. And they can also be very good for keeping your hair protected and cared for and contained if you are trying to grow it longer or if you just want it out of the way. My knowledge base is solely from research and what I call experimental archaeology on my own hair. <laughs> Shows like The Vikings and The Last Kingdom, like every reenactor's favorite slash least favorite, um, <laughs> have I guess really sort of confused our, our visual idea of what historical hairstyles are accurate. They tend to lean a lot into historical fantasy, they tend to use a lot of modern trends, and in some situations, they also tend to appropriate from traditions that are not accurate to medieval Europe as a setting. Um, some of them will straight up appropriate African braiding tradition. Let's talk about some accurate, um, evidence-supported medieval and Viking Age European hairstyles that are maybe not going to look as weird for the modern person is the cornets and possibly will have a little bit of that like fantasy flair. The main basis for a lot of these hairstyles was braids, but not in the sense mm -hmm. that Hollywood tries to portray it. The basic three strand braid is simple, easy to do, and it was a good protective hairstyle to not only keep your hair clean, but to keep it from breaking as well. What we don't have a lot of evidence for is this right here just wearing your hair down and loose <laughs> most of the time when we have art that has women with their hair down it was usually a mythological creature or goddess or some kind of biblical person or allegorical figure like a, a queen or the virgin mary it's like an illustration of like this is just how divine or inhumanly powerful this person being depicted is because look she's got her hair out i don't wear my hair down because this is way too much to deal with <laughs> the the other thing they would have done to help you know, protect their hair and stuff is head scarves as well. Today we tend to think of them as being associated with religious modesty or occasionally being associated with protective styles for very, very fragile coily hair. In medieval Europe and a lot of other places in that time period too, they were pretty much ubiquitous due to their sheer practicality. Part of the way head scarves got codified into religion the way they did, it was just practical that you covered your hair. So it became written into the religious customs that generally everybody um, should have some kind of head covering, but married women especially were meant to cover up all of their hair. Unmarried women, on the other hand, you do what you want, although um, you would probably still have something on your head for practicality because linen headscarves especially are really, really good at keeping the hair clean. It moisture wicks without drying the hair out the way cotton does, and the smoothness means you're not going to get a lot of frizz. A lot of curly haired folks like to use silk pillowcases. People in medieval Europe were not really using silk as head wraps unless you were really, really rich. The linen pillowcases I have um, from Brooklyn and are just about as good as any silk pillowcases I've ever used, which makes it a good time to mention Brooklyn is giving you $20 off any order over $100 if you use my code SNAPPYDRAGON at checkout. Click the link below. Y'all have probably heard me talk at length about how much I love these sheets. Brooklyn has made luxury, good quality home textiles and other essentials much more affordable by cutting out the middlemen. You can mix and match over 20 colors and patterns when choosing your bedding, as well as mix and match sizes and get a set that looks as good as it feels without ever actually having to get out of bed. I got the linen hardcore bundle, which includes the core sheet set, 
a duvet cover, and extra pillowcases for 25% less than buying the same things individually. It's got all the qualities that make linen great for clothes and headscarves. Soft, breathable, lightweight, and lasts forever. These sheets are Okeotex certified and they're dyed in small batches so they've each got their own character. I had linen cotton blend sheets before I got Brooklinens and the difference is just unbelievable. These sheets feel like sleeping in a cloud, but like a soft, warm cloud instead of a damp, misty one. I can have my giant, snuggly, oversized duvet without overheating, and they keep me extra comfortable on my working from bed days when my chronic pain is acting up. If you too would like some beautiful, comfortable, and historically appropriate bed sheets, use my code SNAPPYDRAGON at checkout to get $20 off any order of $100 or more at the link in the description. In addition to covering your hair to help protect it from any dirt and things. One of the ways that women would have kept their hair clean is combing. And this was everybody. This is one of the most common items found in Viking Age graves is a regular comb. You have a wide tooth side and a fine tooth side. And this is your detangling side over here. And then your fine tooth side is the side that you use for cleaning. So this actually pulls the dirt and everything off of your scalp and helps moisturize the rest of your hair with your hair's natural conditioner. The other tools that they would have used, the single-sided combs, and these are really common in graves as well. Your ribbon or ties, this is, I use cotton tape for mine because it's easier yep. to clean. Uh, hair bodkin, and this is literally just a stick, and this is used for yeah. parting your hair. And if you're doing an intricate style with multiple braids or multiple levels, then you'll go ahead and put your hair up in a bun here and stick this in and that'll actually hold your hair up because they didn't have alligator clips. You also had hairpins. This is a replica of a 14th century hairpin that's in the Museum of London. And these are replicas of a medieval hairpin that we actually have in our artifact collection that we take to events. This is my personal one that I use and it's just a basic U-shaped one. And this is what I do for most of my daily hairstyles as well. This is a replica of the Jorvik cap. This one is sewn all the way solid and it's got the nice curve to it. In the Viking age, these were a lot more common in finds. And then I have this one, it's a replica of the Dublin cap and it's a square. But the thing I like about this is the back is actually split. So if I have my hair in a big braid or a big bun at the back of my head, this lets it show a little bit. And I tend to go more for veils, the sort of Norman, uh, English, uh, Jewish, sort of 12th century uh, kit that I have. You see a lot of like circular veils just draped over the head, or you would also see some people in that period who would have a rectangular linen veil wrapped around. And then here's the, the one that started it all. This would be um, accurate to more like the 13th century, specifically in Italy. This is a circular veil with a double blue border on it that was required as identifying dress for Jewish women in that time and place. How many of these styles are just two braids on either side of the head arranged differently? Pretty much all of them. <laughs> if you can do three basic three or two basic three strand braids, then you're golden. You can do most period styles from the Bronze Age up through the Renaissance. <laughs> I don't like hair taping, mm -hmm. but I like the way that it looks. So I actually use my cotton twill and I braid this into my hair to mimic the look of hair taping and it gives me an, a little bit of extra stability. I'm just gonna do um, just a three strand braid on either side of my head. In period, we know that the braids that most women had didn't seem to taper. What is proposed and what you can do to get that same look, take bits of the hair out of one strand, move it to the next strand with every single time, so it's kind of like a combination of three strand and fishtail braid. Since I'm not uh, taping my braids, what I'm gonna do is I'm tying them off with a little bit of linen yarn. This is the same linen yarn that I've used for, for tablet weaving. Wrap it around a few times, pull it nice and tight, and then tie the ends into a little bow so I can untie it easily later. And this is really good for that too. All I do is I just tie it off over mm -hmm. the end here. That yeah, way so if it you're, won't if pull you're, out. If you're braiding something into your hair, you just tie it off with that same thing and you'll never have to worry about your hair ties falling out. You can use modern hair elastics on the end of these. It does damage your hair though. So if you're doing this 
out of protective hairstyle, you want to be I careful always with recommend your hair tying ties. it off. If you're doing these kind of period braiding techniques mm -hmm. where you're going to be wrapping them around the head, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be pretty. Nope. <laughs> Got my two braids. Let's speed run this. The first one I'm going to struggle with because it works a lot better with your length hair. Behind the head braids. Literally okay. put your hair behind your head mm -hmm. and wrap it around and stick some pins in it. This and I'll just, you know, tuck the ends up underneath. Oh, looks like I missed a strand of hair back here when I did my braids. We'll just tuck that in. And then just stick some hair pins in it. Yep. Driving some of the scalp hair as well as the braids. I have no idea what this looks like. Um, viewers, y'all are gonna have to tell me if this looks any good down in the comments because I can't see it. It would have been period with veils, but this one is the Jorvik cap. It's the one that's mm -hmm. straight back. So I'll just tie this fillet on. This is just a band of linen with some ties on the end. And I can stick some veil pins in here. And there we go. What's so, next? Over the head. Mm -hmm. So all you're gonna do is go straight over the head. And if you've got looser braids like I do right now, I'm just gonna give them a little twist to tighten them up. Mm -hmm. And you just go yeah. straight over the head, kind of cross them at the top. See, my hair's not actually long enough for this. And you then, see, I've just got my little tufty ends. I would have to tuck these in really carefully and hope for the best. Or do hair taping. Yes, or I would have to tape them or just cover it up with a veil. And the, the nice thing is a veil will cover a lot of hair related difficulties. I've got mine to where it goes all the way around and then I would just tie this off in the back and take my pins and pin it straight through the braid, through the scalp hair, and that would hold them in place all day. Drooping over the head mm -hmm. braids. So all you do is pull them up you can do yep. like and then it covers up your under. ear or you can pull them tighter and hold it in place. Perfect. You can do the same thing, but in a variation where it goes under the back of your hair. So you start at the back and wrap mm -hmm. around the other direction really first. It wouldn't work so well on your hair. Yeah, I'm going to run yeah. out. A later uh, Germanic style. Mm -hmm. um, from like the mid 1400s to where the braids go straight over your ears and they go right on the hairline. It looks really weird to the For, modern eye, but, th but there you go. Yes. But a lot of these you're like adding something next to your ears because if you've got a veil over your head, that's kind of where you see the hair. That's kind of true with the cornets, the like not quite princess Leia bun situation. You, you can pull that up and a lot of them will start at the temple or start a yeah. little bit higher or you can mm -hmm. pull them straight up and there's a style where you accordion the hair. Mhm. Mm oh wow. I'm not I'm not even going to attempt that. The the other one you basically just sort of roll the hair into a spiral. Hey, I got it. So if you've got this and then you're doing sort of a more 14th century style especially if you have a wimple under the chin around the braids and you would pin it up at the top of your head, it's very Princess Leia. Yes. But it's cute. <laughs> this is how I did my hair for the Renaissance Festival when I went. Take the hair and instead of coiling it um, at like over the top of your head like this, you sort of go right back to the crown of the head and you make a nice little yep. circle there. You would have a bodkin with a split in it. You get a focus camera. There we go. That's basically like a very large blunt needle and you could put a ribbon or some tape in it and you would sew the braids to the hair at your scalp. That type of uh, hair taping goes back even to the Bronze Age. There's a Danish mm -hmm. bog body that actually has her hair when she was buried. Her hair was taped in a really similar fashion. The first one I'm going to do is I call it the Valkyrie Knot and it's based off of uh, several pendants and lots of drawings on like runestones and things in Scandinavia of women that are usually interpreted as Valkyries. They have a knot in their hair. We also have a couple of pendants which make it really obvious how this hairstyle was done and it's pretty easy to do. You're gonna pull your hair back and some of these were done with with it higher on the head and some they're depicted where it's very low. I take and I twist first so I get everything nice and smoothed down and then wrap it around my hand here, come around the other side 
just like that and back through to make a knot and then I'm going to tighten that up like it's a ponytail take a hairpin here and just like with any hairstyle with the hairpins I'm going to weave it like you're sewing a little running stitch between the hair in your head and the hair in the style yep and then there it is if you don't put a hairpin in it, it's probably just going to slide out. I've seen some people who have locks in their hair or they have box braids or very small braids and they take those, the braids or the locks and they put them in this style and it looks amazing. It looks really good with locks. There's also another variation of this. It's not even just medieval space buns, it's sailor boots. Full blown. Complete with the... And it's from a pendant from the Viking Age and gonna part my hair using my bodkin just like before I'm bringing it up and we're doing it like ponytails and these on the actual pendant are pretty high on her head make my knot here I'm gonna wrap it around and I'm gonna go all the way around that way I can get a better knot but if you have shorter hair you, you probably you can't to wrap all the way around yep and I'm going to pin it there we go <laughs> oh that's so cute so the pendant she's actually like this and you can't really tell how long the ponytails are but yeah space buns <laughs> the appeal of a lot of these um, not very historically accurate shows and the hairstyling we see in them is it a sense of fantasy and it's very intricate and it's very cool looking and it's not quite so like milkmaid ish as this so there's a yep. couple <laughs> styles that are a bit more intricate and fantastical and interesting that are braid based documented for medieval Europe that we can try the Ellie woman and she's actually a Danish bog body um, mm -hmm. and she was buried with a really intricate really pretty hairstyle you're gonna separate your hair mm -hmm. into two so you have a top section and a bottom section start doing a basic three strand braid on that top section of your hair mm -hmm. get that all the way down to uh, the nape of your neck and then when you get down there you're gonna add in the rest of that hair and make it into a more complicated braid towards the end. Mm -hmm. You pick five strand or six strand braid, mm -hmm. or you can just do a, add it to the strands that you already have there and just do it as a bigger three strand braid. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make an attempt at the five strand. The way I know how to do a five strand braid, it's just weaving over and under. So the strand furthest on the left goes yep. over, and then under, and then over, and then, yeah. how am I gonna do this? Under, the tricky part is just not losing track of all of the strands. So the thing about Elling Woman's hair though is she's dead. She's a yep. log body, she's a burial, and she's not just someone who died in an accident and her body was preserved she was like ceremonially buried with her hair done yeah. like this so, so elling woman did not have to do this braid on her own head because she was dead she wasn't yeah. moving she, she definitely had somebody do it for her you're getting yours braided all the way to the end but the thing with her hair is or at some point her hair got disturbed but the end of her braid isn't braided anymore it's coming unraveled. So when you get to the end, you're going to go through that top braid. So it's got so kind of a hole like a there. So there's a space between yep. the three strand braid and my head, and I'm gonna wrap it around. And then the way that we think it was originally done is go ahead and wrap that all the way around and make it a bun. Do like a basic stick pin. And there you go. Yeah, this is not going anywhere. But we didn't find her with a pin. And we found her with nope. um, her hair. Let me find the end. Kind of unraveled a little bit. Yeah, we found her with her hair just wrapped once, and the end sort of hanging. Yep. So you could do like accent braids or things to jazz this up. You could add ribbons or, mm -hmm. or ornaments or things. But this is a perfectly documented hairstyle. One of the most, I guess, intricate and fantastical looking ones here is the Hammerum girl. We don't have all of her hair. Her hair had yeah. partially decomposed. One side of her hair, we just we don't have but the other side of her hair next to her hairline little bitty three strand braids um they're just very cool looking accents 
And a lot of what we tend to see in these these Hollywood shows is a lot of very like small, intricate braids done. And this is sort of some evidence of like you can do those and you can have those incorporated into your hairstyle and you can have that visual interest and texture. You can do it without um, using traditions that were not appropriate to the period and that are in a modern context uh, appropriative for, for, for people to do if it's not part of your background. And then the rest of her hair, as best we could tell, was um, just a three-strand braid and in a bun. If you are good at braiding, you don't necessarily just have to do three-strand braids. We've got a lot of evidence yeah. with Romans doing four, five, six-strand crazy braids mm -hmm. on the top of their heads. Rope braids, and there's different types of, of four and five and six strand braids you can yep. do. So now you've got these just three little accent braids by the hairline, and they're adding that, that texture and that visual interest. And because we have the evidence of people doing these, like you can do something that's in this vein, but not exactly the same. There's a ton of interest in being able to adapt these historical hairstyles and historical hair care methods to the modern day. And yes, a lot of them are really cool looking, but they're also really practical. If you're trying to grow your hair out and you just can't figure out why, it's probably getting damaged. You know, I have, I have a Jeep, so when I have the roof open, my hair gets crazy damage if I have it up in a ponytail. So this is something you can do, just throw your hair up like this if you have, you know, a vehicle or if you do things outdoors where it's windy, it'll stop your hair from getting broken and stuff like that. And historical people knew this because unlike us, they didn't have alternatives. If, if we're going to take an interest in historical hairstyles, like we have the research skills to be able to sort of start to figure out the differences between what we see in these shows that is not necessarily staying true to the source material that's giving us this sort of skewed view of where certain hairstyling traditions came from. And a lot of these traditions that are being borrowed from have a significance that means it's it's very difficult to borrow from them respectfully in the world we live in. Some are even impossible. With modern hair care products and everything, just because our moms made bad decisions in the 80s with their hair doesn't mean we need to. We don't have to spend hundreds of dollars a year on hair care products. I have a $5 comb. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's people in, in history weren't stupid. They weren't dirty. The great thing about being a modern person researching history is you've got options. I was in the military for eight years. I wore my hair up every single day and I did so much damage to my hair. When I got out, I wanted to wear my hair up every day just because I was used to it, but I knew I was causing damage and getting headaches and this was a way for me to be able to wear my hair up, but still have healthy hair. What attracts people to these fantastical depictions and these inaccurate depictions is they look much more interesting to us than our idea of what history was really like. They got bored with their hair too. They tried different things. They might have used different methods. They might have been using a lot of three strand braids, yeah. but they did have fun hairstyles. Just because we have evidence of somebody doing this on their hair with two three strand braids doesn't mean they didn't do different configurations. You saw how many we did in, I'm sure that will time lapse out to mm -hmm. what, 30 seconds? <laughs> And that was just the and ones that we know about. It's super simple. Think of all the ones that, yep. that, we d that didn't survive for us to find evidence of them. So you've got something new coming out soon that you're going to announce, right? I do. Follow, like, everything on our social media because I am going to have something special coming out in the next few weeks or so. Where can the good people find you around the internet? Uh, it's Rigor Crafts, R-I-G-R-C-R-A-F-T-S. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, BriggerCrafts.com. And what else do I have for social media? I think that's it. I'm, 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 I'm a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, I don't have that much more than that either. You can find me on Instagram at Miss Snappy Dragon. You can find me at the shiny pretty website, uh, SnappyDragonStudios.com. Or if you want access to the behind the scenes info, research notes, um, maybe even a little bit of extra input on the research from Jackie, go to Patreon.com slash SnappyDragonStudios. Also, Editing Vee just popping in to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring this video, for sending me truly glorious bed linens, and for giving my viewers $20 off any order over $100 if you use my code SnappyDragon at 
checkout. Link is in the description. Tell us in the comments about your favorite historically inspired hairstyle, and we would love to see them too. So hopefully we'll, we'll see a few of you around on Instagram um, where we can actually see pictures of you. Don't forget to like while you're there and subscribe for more hair history shenanigans. Um, we promise there will be more in the future. Thank you for hanging out with us as we braided and braided and unbraided <laughs> and braided our hair. And we will see you around the web. Bye. Thank you. Bye.